everyone in this video i will go over my solution for the problem named coxia and number theory taken from today's goodbye 2022 round in this problem we will learn how to combine pigeonhole principle from combinatorics and modular arithmetic from number theory in order to solve this essentially number theoretic problem so in this problem we are given an array a of n positive integers where n is less than or equal to 100 and we want to determine whether there exists a positive integer x such that the gcd of ai plus x comma ag plus x is 1 for all pairs of integers i and g so essentially we need to choose some integer x which is greater than 0 so we cannot choose x to be 0 and we want to increment all the elements in the array a by x and then we want to check whether all the pairs of elements are co-prime so for example let's say we have the array 5 7 10 and we want to make all pairs of elements co-prime so we can initially see that if we increase by 1 then we'll have 6 8 11 so this does not work increasing by 2 makes it 7 9 11 7 9 12 sorry this does not work because over here gcd of 6 comma 8 is 2 over here gcd of 9 comma 12 is 3 and similarly if you try increasing by 3 in this case you'll actually get you'll get again gcd of 8 comma 10 is 2 which is greater than 1 so instantly over here you can see that whenever you increase by an odd number both so this will become even and this will become even so that's why the gcd will be 2 which is greater than 1 so that's why you can't increase by an odd number so you only have to increase by even numbers so x is 1 and x is 3 does not work x is 4 and x is 6 and x is 8 those are the possibilities because in that case these two will not be even they will be odd so let's try x is 4 so when x is 4 we get this increasing each element by plus 4 and this actually works so we print valid and yeah you can see that in the explanation as well x is 4 and this is the final array so this is valid and we print this we just print yes in the end we just need to print yes or no we do not need to find the value of x um, in the next example since two elements of the array are equal so if a is equal to aj then this means that a i plus x will also be equal to aj plus x and the gcd will be greater than 1 and therefore gcd will be greater than 1 so that's why this is a trivial condition when a i is equal to a g we just print no directly so so we can move on to the main solution and we can break up the main solution into two cases the first is the trivial case which we just check using you can use either an n square brute force or you can sort the elements and check whether uh, two consecutive elements are equal to each other or not uh, since n can be up to 1000 uh, across all the test cases n square is fine so in the first case if a is equal to ag for some two elements then you will print no immediately so this is case one if there are two equal elements you just print no otherwise in the general case when all the elements are distinct all elements are distinct you need to realize that the case you need to realize that if if there are some odd numbers and if there are some even numbers so let's say that let's say that if you if you consider a few examples 
let's consider one example in which you have something like 1, 1, 2, 2. Then, I mean, all elements should be distinct. So let's say you have something like 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the key idea is that you need to consider numbers modulo some other number. So let's take the mod value to be equal to 2. So let's take m to be equal to 2. m is the modulus. Let's say m is 2. Then we can see that if you take each number modulo m, you will get 1, 0, 1, 0. Because the remainder when you divide a number by 2 is 1, 0, 1, 0. So if you write this array out, you will realize that there are two occurrences of 1 and there are two occurrences of 0. And this is problematic because if you increase each element of the array by x, you will get 1 plus x, x, 1 plus x and x. And you will always, so, so if you increase, if x is 1 for example, then then this will become then this will become 2 so 2 is 0 uh, 1 0 1 so there will be two numbers which are which are divisible by 2 and even in this case there were two numbers divisible by 2 so that's why no matter what you choose the value of x to be if you choose x to be 1 if you choose x to be 2 if you choose x to be 3 and so on you will always get two numbers which are which are divisible by 2 so that's why the gcd will always be 2 so the gcd is always greater than or equal to 2 and this means that you print no so if you consider the modulus to be 2 we just need to check if if there are at least two odd numbers odd numbers and two even numbers then immediately we print no because of this logic that whatever number you add to each element you will always have at least two elements which are divisible by two that's why the gcd will always be greater than or equal to two now you need to extend this for any modulus if you consider another example if you consider the modulus to be three or four or five or six or seven it doesn't matter for any modulus n, I'll take another example when n is 3. If you consider some random elements, so if you consider 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and if you consider the remainders when they are divided by 3, so you'll get 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0. And if each remainder appears at least twice, if each remainder appears at least twice, then this means that whatever number x you add to, to this to these elements you will always get there will always be two occurrences of a zero there will always be at least two numbers congruent to zero mod m if if each remainder appears at least twice. So what I'm basically trying to say is that if you consider some modulus m, for example, m could be 2 or m could be 3 or m could be 5 or m could be 7. If you consider some modulus m and if you consider each, each number divided by m, if you consider the remainder when each number is divided by m, if those remainders appear at least twice, so if each remainder from, from 0 to m minus 1 appears at least twice, then whatever value of x, whatever value of x you choose, you will always get two numbers which are divisible by m so this means that the gcd the gcd will always be greater than or equal to m and that's why we will print no so what we basically need to do is that we need to check for all possible values of m 
if if all the numbers from 0 till m minus 1 if all the remainders from 0 to m minus 1 appear at least twice so if all the remainders from 0 to m minus 1 appear at least twice then we know that we can print no immediately however if some remainder appears only once then we know that there will be some possible value of x such that the gcd will be will, will not be greater than or equal to m so that's why we don't do anything we move on to the next value of m so if we hit any value of m such that each remainder from 0 to m minus 1 appears at least twice in the array then we will print no otherwise if we have checked all possible values of m we will break out of, we, we, we will exit the entire loop and we will print yes now the key observation is that m can be only between 1 and n this is a key idea which we will need to use to optimize our code so you could iterate over all possible values of m from 1 to 10 power of 18 but obviously that takes 10 power of 18 iterations uh, which won't work and the key observation is that you only need to check for remainders you only, you only need to check for moduli between 1 and n be between 2 and n sorry 1 is not a moduli uh, 1 is not a valid modulus because every number is 0 mod 1 so that's why you check for each modulus from 2 to n whether the the remainders appear at least twice so if for any m between 2 and n all the remainders from 0 to m minus 1 appear at least twice in the array then we print no immediately otherwise after we have checked for all m from 2 to n we print yes now if you want to understand exactly why we just need to check between we, we just need to check for all moduli from 2 to n uh, you can ask me in the comments down below and i'll give the uh, formal proof but it relies the basis of this statement is that it is the pigeonhole principle and basically the logic is that if you consider some number greater than n then it should have factors which lie between 2 and n and um, and we we don't need to we have already checked for a modulus between 2 and n we have checked for all moduli between 2 and n using this loop that's why uh, it's redundant to check numbers greater than n and that's why we just need to check for all moduli between 2 and n how, how many how, how many times each remainder appears and if each remainder appears at least twice then we print no immediately so now i'll show you the code which implements the same idea so in the code for each test case i take in the number of elements in the array and i take in the array using long long variables because the values of ai can be up to 10 power of 18 and i initialize valid to be true so valid represents the final answer yes or no so valid is true implies yes otherwise no and for each pair of elements from for, for, for each i going from 1 to n and for each j going from i plus 1 to n if a is equal to a j we set valid to be false otherwise we just check for each modulus from 2 to n if if uh, if some modulus from 2 to n exists such that the counts so count basically represents the number of occurrences of each remainder and uh, the remainders can be from 0 to m minus 1 because you are taking mod m so for each i going from 1 to n we increase count of ai modulus m by 1 and in the end we know that if all or if all remainders appear at least twice so this loop basically checks whether all remainders appear at least twice and uh, if all remainders appear at least twice then we set valid to be false because we know that the final answer will be no if any two numbers are equal to each other or if all the remainders appear at least twice because in the case when all the remainders appear at least twice then we know that we know that there will always be two numbers 
which are divisible by m so the gcd will not be 1 the gcd will be m or bigger so that's why we said value to be false if, if any such if any so for all possible values of the modulus between 2 and n we, we do this check and in the end if if there is no such modulus then by the pigeonhole principle there won't be any bigger modulus greater than n and that's why we print yes if if, if valid still remains true but if if it becomes invalid for any value of modulus m or if two pairs of integers are equal then we print no so basically if valid we print yes otherwise we print no and you can verify that this code gets accepted so i hope you like this problem and my solution if you have any doubts do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you